Hi, I'm Joe Krajic, Professor of Science Education and the Director for Create the STEM Institute at Michigan State University. And with me today is actually Kristen Mayer, who is a graduate student at Michigan State University, but also a physical science teacher. You know, we're in a really exciting time in science education in this nation. With the release of the framework for K-12 science education and the next generation of science standards, we have a new vision of what teaching and learning should look like in the classroom. Both the framework and the next generation of science standards perhaps have three major changes than from previous science teaching. The first is this focus on three-dimensional learning. What does three-dimensional learning mean? It basically says that kids learning in classrooms should be driven by students making sense of phenomena or finding solutions to problems by using disciplinary core ideas, cross-cutting concepts, and scientific and engineering practices. The second big focus is that the standards, the next generation of science standards, are designed for all students. Science today is not a luxury, but it's fundamentally important to understanding the society and the world in which we learn in. The third big change that's in the framework is this notion of you have to have curriculum materials that not only support three-dimensional learning, but also build those ideas slowly across time and giving opportunities for students to actually make use of those. Today, we're going to introduce you not only to what NGSS and the framework is all about, but also to a curriculum project called Interactions. Interactions was funded by Discovery Research for K-12 Science Education, a program from the National Science Foundation. So I'm going to let Kristen let, introduce a little bit of herself to you, as well as tell you a little bit more about the project. Hey, so I was a high school chemistry and ninth grade physical science teacher for many years. Um, I taught primarily in large urban school districts and ha was very fortunate to have the opportunity to participate in a great professional development program while I was teaching, which really transformed my own teaching practices. And from that, I got really interested in students' ideas and how we can develop curriculum that makes use of students' ideas as stepping stones instead of problems that need to be corrected. And so I decided to come back to grad school where I've been really committed to working closely with classrooms in my graduate school work. The Interactions Project is a curriculum research and development project where um, we've, over the last few years, have been developing a computer-based curriculum. Um, so you'll see the students working a lot on the computers, but it's important to realize that it's not an individual self-paced curriculum. The teacher still has a really important role for facilitating um, classroom discussions, and students should be having lots of conversations with their partner and with the whole class trying to make sense of the evidence they're gathering. Kristen, can you tell us a little bit more about the project and what we hope to accomplish? So, so in the Interactions Project, we are building towards these four larger performance expectations, but those are big goals. So on a day-to-day -day or weekly basis, we have smaller learning goals, which still blend together cross-cutting concepts, scientific and engineering practices, and disciplinary core ideas, and act as kind of stepping stones to get the students to those larger performance expectations. Also, the project really focuses on having students make observations of phenomenon and then have driving questions that they're trying to answer in order to really explain what's going on. So your example of the socks sticking together when you take them out of the dryer, that's a driving question that we're trying to answer by kind of collecting evidence from several different investigations and building and adding to the answer to that question throughout the unit. And then finally, the uh, Interactions Project also really focuses on having students develop their own models to explain the phenomenon. Scientific modeling is a really important practice because models really help explain observations and phenomenon. So by doing modeling, students are building um, a causal mechanism or a cause and effect and pulling in that cross-cutting concept to be able to explain a variety of observations. So as I understand it, and I think it's important to realize that these performance expectations are actually the working together or the integration of a core idea, which is a really powerful idea within the science discipline, a scientific practice 
or an engineering practice uh, like modeling, which uh, this project focuses on, but also um, the use of cross-cutting concepts like cause and effect or the finding of patterns. And it sounds like from your description that this project actually, throughout the entire project, kids are always blending some aspect of the, of a, of the core idea, various practices, as well as these cross-cutting concepts. And I'm curious, as a classroom teacher uh, who's worked with kids for a number of years, what do you see some of the major advantages, advantages in teaching in a cell? Because it is different. Here we have kids trying to figure out how does this thing work, this phenomena, using these core ideas, scientific practices, and cross-cutting concepts. I think a big difference is, you know, students can often memorize definitions and, and know the right word to say to answer a question, but they can't really use those ideas to explain any of their observations or any new ideas or new uh, phenomenon that they encounter. But by taking the time to really engage in these practices and cross-cutting concepts to develop a rich understanding of the core ideas, then students can go on and explain new things they encounter using those ideas that they've spent a while really developing into a rich network of understanding. So creating models uh, is something new for high school teaching and learning. We Normally in the past, teachers would, would somewhat give kids models, but it wasn't for the kid to somewhat create the model based on evidence that they've actually experienced. So this, in, in many ways, provides challenges for teachers and for students. So I'm wondering, uh, what do you do in your own teaching to sort of support kids in this important, in but many respects, very challenging practice of modeling? Yeah, it is very challenging and new for students. And so one of the things that we have in the curriculum is we introduce the idea of modeling using kind of this scaffold where we talk about um, all models have components that are visually represented somehow in the model. But then you also want to indicate some sort of relationship between those components. And I think a key aspect of modeling is that then those relationships between the components have to lead to some sort of explanation or a causal mm -hmm. account of what's happening in their observations. So you know, just having a diagram is not a model unless you can use it to explain why something's happening. In the curriculum, we use those three aspects of modeling the components, the relationships between the components and the connection to the phenomenon as a way to introduce the idea of modeling. And you'll also see in the video clips that that's used as a way to kind of frame the discussions. So students in the curriculum are asked to do modeling multiple times and they revise the same models over and over. And whenever they do a model, we'll then display the models that the students worked on and use that to foster a discussion of, and, and talk about, okay, what components do you see here? What relationships are shown? How do these connect to our observations? And can these account for the observations we made? So the world of NGSS and the science teaching and what, kid, what students are doing in the world of NGSS seems very, very different than previous uh, teaching and what teachers are doing in the classroom. So in this world in which kids are actually constructing models, designing investigations, talking with each other to try to figure out stuff. What is the role of the teacher? I mean, what do you do? Yeah, it's a very different approach, I think, and a very different way of, of thinking as your role of a teacher. Um, I've come to the point where I really see my role as kind of trying to understand what the students are thinking and almost studying the students' ideas and then thinking of what evidence might help push the students' thinking forward. So. Uh, as the teacher, I'm not the source of the information. I don't have the answers. The students are using the evidence to evaluate their own answers. And that's new and challenging for students and, and can be scary, I think. And so another important thing for the teacher is really kind of setting a safe classroom environment where ideas change and that's normal and it's exciting and fun because that means we're learning something. Um, and so a lot of that happens by me as the teacher being interested in hearing what the students are saying without evaluating what the students are saying. So asking lots of questions and asking, you know, who else has a different idea? Do you agree with that? Do you disagree? 
okay, we have a, sounds like we have a couple different ideas on the table. Does anyone have a different one that hasn't been brought up yet? Really trying to pull out different ideas from the students without judging or evaluating those ideas. And then as we collect evidence, then I ask the students to use the evidence we have to evaluate their own ideas. So I always try to respond fairly neutrally to the students' ideas and just have interest in what they're saying and then ask the students to do the evaluation based on the evidence that they've collected. So the next generation of science standards and the framework for K-12 science education paints a very different picture of what science teaching and learning should look like in the classroom. Kids, students, directed under a, the guidance of a, a teacher who really understands both the core ideas, the practices, and cross-cutting concepts are now in the position of using those practices, using those ideas to try to really figure out phenomena, how phenomena works, make sense of phenomena, or find solutions to challenging problems. And what Kristen and I hope that you will see in the next little bit are actually what does classrooms look like? And we're using the backdrop of this, of what does it look like, this interactions project that we've been designing in order to help kids understand electrical interactions. <laughs>